portion of the video I wanted to share with you how my planner functions in my daily life and I believe that no matter how pretty any planner is or how cute it is if it doesn't really effectively function in your everyday routine then it's probably not the right planner for you or it's probably um, it's just probably that you fell in love with it because it looks so cute. And I've done that before where I just fall in love with things just because it's too adorable and I just need it in my life. So, uh, but I just want to show you how this planner uh, that I created functions in my life and how I can say that it makes my planning more efficient and more effective. So to start off, I just want to say that I'm more used to this daily setup where I'm writing things down and I can detail out my whole day and I even have planners before that were a day on two pages. It was not efficient for me to, for example, if I was working on invitations for a friend and it was going to take a period of two weeks, it was not efficient for me to say work on invitations and the next day move it over, work on invitations. And even though I can see that, you know, I, if, as I flip through the pages, how many days I worked on the invitations, it's just not an effective use of my time to keep on repeating all my tasks over to the next day and the next day and the next day. It was redundant and repetitive and I needed something better to track my um, projects that were more of a longer term basis instead of using a daily kind of calendar. So what I ended up doing was creating a weekly planner. And I created this, customized it to my life, and there are two major components to my weekly planner that I want to share with you. The first thing is that many weekly planners take Saturday and Sunday and combine it into they condense it and combine it into a tiny little box that is smaller than any other boxes for any other day of the week. And that might work for some people, but it does not work for my lifestyle because I have four boys, a husband, and we just each have so many projects. So my weekends are just as busy or if not busier than any other day of the week. So I really needed that full space for my Sunday and Saturday, and I needed it to be um, the same equal size as any other day of the week. So that was one reason why I created my own. Second reason was um, even though I did see that there were several planners that had equal spaces for Saturday and Sunday, the thing that I did not like about it was uh, specifically I was looking for the spiral binding but then the ones that I've seen so far it, it just didn't take full advantage of this uh, kind of binding system and the reason being is that this binding system you can fold over. So what I prefer was to have my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday all on one sheet and then to have on the opposite sheet I would just glance at my planner on my desk and see my whole weekend at a glance without having to flip it back and forth if I was taking advantage of this folding over um, capability of this planner. So let's say that if it was the other way where I've seen most planner um, to have their setup like, it's usually Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. So that means that your Saturday is over here and your Sunday is over here. And to me that just um, was something that even though it's easy to flip it over, I prefer if I didn't have to. It's just one last thing for me to do and it's just easier to just glance at one sheet instead of having to flip flop my planner back and forth. So that was the second reason why I set it up this way. Now if you see this last box right here, it's just a jot some thoughts kind of box and that allows me to reflect on my entire week because I'm a firm believer of reflecting back on your day uh, on your week, on your month, it allows you to absorb and make a summary of the day or a conclusion of the day, things that I've learned or things that impacted me or just little notes here and there, something that um, I can take away from life of that day or of that week. So here's my little jot, the, uh, jot some thoughts and I did it as a grid just so that I can doodle if I 
felt inspired to doodle instead of writing something down. Now I'm going to get to the really fun part. Well, I think it's fun because this is where the functionality of this planner is so dynamic for me. And I'm just going to flip us over to the monthly view. So I don't know why I don't just flip it over like this. I already marked my month. <laughs> but this is the monthly view and I decided to go with the setup of having it go from Monday through Sunday just so I can have that one page view of my weekend like how it is with my weekly calendar. As far as the functionality, if you open it up this way, then I will have this full view of my month's focus and reflections and inspiration. And this just helps me stay in tune with um, whatever motivates me instead of being distracted by all the little to-dos. I can then gear toward, gear all my little to-dos towards um, the main goal or the main objective for the month. So if you look closely here, I have where it says monthly goals, genius ideas, and a visionary mind daydreams often. And I believe in daydreaming because without daydreaming, you don't really have this vision of how you want and your life to be. on the bottom section here, it's just a monthly reflection. What was good, what could have been better. Again, um, I'm a firm believer in reflecting back. And over here, we just have this la-di-da section on the bottom. Anything goes here. And the inspiration box, just so I can have a focus on my month's inspiration. And I really love this idea because I found this quote on Pinterest. It just says, discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. And um, I really try to base my everyday routine on this discipline method where I would get up and, you know, um, do my daily devotion and pray and then also just keep focused and not let things distract me. Like for example, I, after writing down my inspiration, I wrote down my time hoggers and to identify them. And I figured, you know, um, I really need more discipline on Facebook. I can't be spending too long on it because it could just, it's not that I intend to spend long on it. It's just that it's a distraction that is there. And if it's the first thing I reach out and grab in the morning, then I, might not even realize that an hour has gone by and I'm still on Facebook and it's not productive. So I just found this to be very um, healthy for myself to just have an inspiration board right here. So basically this entire view right here, I have my monthly calendar spread and then my goals, reflection, inspiration, and life. This is my monthly view and this is also my monthly view. And for this monthly view, I uh, remember how I was saying that most of my tasks in my current life requires more of a time frame over a few days or over a few weeks to track certain projects. So because most of my projects are like that, I decided to go ahead with a monthly task sheet. And you've probably seen a lot of planners that open up that has a flip up page. Um, but although I love that idea, because I required more space than this, I decided to go from a letter size to a legal size. And the reason why this is so helpful to me is because, let me just zoom in right here. The reason being is once you look at the monthly view here, you'll see that I have my dates from the 1st through the 31st. So, and so if it was just a letter size then I would continue the tracking from I would begin a number well actually these columns will be the tasks themselves and then my tracking will continue onto this side which it did not make sense to me that it would be hidden once I open up my weekly view so that's the reason why I made the uh, move to have the whole legal side paper just to be able to see my full month view if I open up my weekly planner then I still see my whole monthly to-do list and I find that to be very awesome and uh, a closer look at this little to-do list here well that isn't so little because it's a legal size paper 
I have it written down on my personal instructions. It's not that I will forget it, but it just says, let me just zoom in. It says, number one, write it down. So I'm writing down my tasks here. Number two, prioritize. So my priority boxes are over here. And I would just write the due date as, um, as a way to remind me that, hey, I need to get this done by the 12th because, you know, my son Solomon, he's going to go to his FBLA competition. So his FBLA competition is on the 13th and 14th, so I need to get it done by the 12th. So write it down, prioritize it, and it's all in this box so that you can have first glance. Tackle it, and this is the tackling section right here, this um, whole 1 through 31 column. And if I don't have 31 days, that's fine. It just has that capability so that it can be applied to the month with the most days. And I just have a little legend up here that I adopted from different people, um, from the planner community, and specifically more from Franklin Covey, because that was the first planner that I absolutely fell in love with, was the Franklin Covey planners. So, check mark, complete it. Um, arrow over is to table it. And I use these term to table it because I'm so used to like Robert's Rule of Orders uh, since I do hold secretarial positions in um, a few uh, nonprofit boards. And X just means that it's canceled. Like for example, if Solomon's not going anymore, I'm going to cancel the haircut. No, I know he needs a haircut, but just something like that. Like if I need to cancel it, that I know that I'm not just missing it that I'm just not letting that task slip through the crack. It was determined that it was canceled. Um, idea research, I got this from some of the bullet systems that I've seen, the bullet journaling system, and I thought that was great. So I, I included that. Adopt for processing and adopt with the circle around it for delegating. As you can see here, anything that I complete, like for example, for this, I completed on the fourth, I checked it off and I just, blocked it all off so that I knew that it was completely done. I don't have to go and search for every little check mark. It's blocked off. It's done. Cool. But I know the date that it was done. Or like down here where I'm still processing it. Sometimes I'm pending, um, like a task is pending certain things. So I will just write little notes and then just, you know, uh, indicate that, you know, I'm still waiting for this. And just little dots. Like if I know I'm working on it that day, I'm putting little dots on it. And so that's how it works for this to-do list. It's just a blank copy of it. It says some to-dos need to be drawn. Visual to-dos are known as to-doodle-dos because you're doodling, so it's to-doodle-dos. But it's just an attachment to this um, longer spread here. And that's just because sometimes when I have a project and I need to doodle it down because it needs a visual uh, display or a representation, then this is where I'm going to use that doodling section for. And so now you see this task list being open, and this is how I would use this to plan my weekly planner and implement it into my daily. So let's say that I'm on this week, I'm just gonna Pick a day so you guys can see. Okay, let's say that I'm on April 13th through uh, the 19th and pretend that this is a blank um, page right here and that I'm just beginning to plan. So what I would do is, well, before I would even start to plan the next week, let's say that I'm on Sunday of this week where it's April 12th and I'm jotting my thoughts down on Sunday night and after I jot this down, I'm already looking forward to planning on my whole next week during that Sunday night. So I would transfer my thoughts and, you know, have that new mentality since I reflected back and with that mindset, go and conquer my next week. And so it's all blank, let's just say. So I would go to my monthly calendar for the 13th through the 19th. Look at it here. Pull all the major events, like for example, Solomon's FBLA competition in Little Rock. And then um, here's a payday here. That means I need a budget. I, um, I pay bills on payday just to keep me organized. I don't pay on random days throughout the week. It just helps me if I 
pay on the day that I'm paid. And then right here, I have a meeting on Sunday for the quarter. So I have one, two, three things that have been already scheduled in advance. And so I just go here and transfer it over that, hey, FBLA competition here. And uh, I already marked these with stickers that I made from, um, well, I made these stickers already so that I don't have to repeat myself and write it down. So here's the payday and pay bills sticker to remind me. And then my quarterly meeting on the 19th, I would just write it down. If I wanted to, I would probably do something kind of like this FBLA washi tape, but it was just something that I wanted to jot down. I didn't need it to have like major attention like this. For this, my son was going out of town, so of course I wanted to flag myself with something more of a highlight for me. So basically, I would go from my monthly view, transfer the monthly large uh, the, the large events onto my weekly spread and then I would go in and fill in the details. You will see that I have two columns here and the reason why I have two columns is because sometimes I do have an appointment time like for example six o'clock you have to be here Solomon so it flags me and basically I check off on this furthest left column and then this column right here to the right of it, I will either put a time frame or sometimes I'll just add a little arrow or sticker or whatever. But um, this is basically my checkoff column and this is just my tiny little note that needs to stand apart from the descriptions here. So let's just say that during my week, let's say that I really don't have anything planned for the week. Well, this is where the beauty comes in. Remember that pull out task sheet? Well, I will pull it out and I'll be looking at it and I'll say, okay, you know what? I don't really have much on Wednesday. So I'm sitting there on Wednesday and I'm, I've already gone through my checklist. I can just open this up and say, you know what? I do have two hours to squeeze in amazingly. So I think I'm gonna work on this project right here because this one I would probably need more than two hours to focus on to be more effective in it. So I will work on this project right here and um, I would track it here or sometimes if I'm looking at it at the beginning of the day and I realize that, you know, I'm going to have like a good four hours open and I want to be as productive as I can and tackle as many projects as I can, then I might find that, okay, you know, right here I need to work on archiving all the old documents uh, for my finances. So I would block off one hour just to do that. And then, um, for example, here I have a project that I wanted to do for a Bible study group. I had a power of praying uh, wife little group at one time a year or two ago. And I wanted to start up on that again. So then I would put down here like more of the detail like today I'm going to um, set up the group online and I'm going to just invite people into that group and see where we go from there. So this helps me just to really stay focused and make the most use of my time when I'm done planning my weekly and I'm on to my next month. So let's say that I'm done with April and now I'm going to be entering the month of May. So these get um, these boxes get filled in at the beginning of the year with birthdays and major events like last day of school. As far as the tasks go, the task can now be more efficiently managed because I have this April to-do list, right? And then now I have my May to-do list and I can just pull this out and transfer what wasn't done, like for example, I need to do the annual report formatting. I would put that down. Uh, I need to work on um, this book right here, so I would write that task down. And then like for example, I'm working on this certain calendar for the certain project. I would transfer it down, uh, tra transfer it over, and it's so easy because I'm not having to flip my planner back and forth and say okay, or um, having to take it out, tear it out somehow, or um, if it was a binder, it would probably work. But 
it's just an easy way to be able to transfer once a month all the to-dos that have to be carried over to the next month. And I found that to just be very thrilling how this whole format just fit into place so well. I want to show you this other view. Remember I told you that I have this yearly calendar over here? Okay, if you look at this, this is all grid paper. And it's like, for example, if me and my sisters, we have a great idea to go on a cruise next year. So I might just flip it over here and say, you know what, start thinking of cruises on my 2016 calendar and this opens up all the way it has 2015 on this side and 2016 on the opposite side and I only needed 2015 to show when I open up my weekly calendar I'm doing major planning which is a little road trip with my sister so the road trip is for next week and I just have this pack of stickers here and this you know things to pack this here because I know I'm going to be working on that so I'm going to be packing my bags on this day, leaving this day with her, and then we're going to be traveling. And so it's, we're traveling on May 30th, and we're not going to be, I mean, April 30th, and we're not going to be back until uh, May the 4th. So this allows me to have this yearly uh, glance here and see the dates, because certain days I have certain things, like, for example, I'm going to be gone on... Wednesday, but then on Thursday, my sons need to have someone to pick them up from the Boys and Girls Club. So I want to make sure that if my husband's not available, I do have someone arranged to pick them up. And um, for example, I'm looking at my May here where it spills over and I have this Monday slot. They're going to be at the Boys and Girls Club yet again. So I need to make sure that that day my husband doesn't schedule anything so that he can take care of them that day by picking them up and making sure that everything's taken care of. So it's just helpful to have this whole view at one glance for the yearly. And then to have this view and say, okay, you know, um, these certain tasks need to be done by this date and I'm going to be gone by that date. So I got to plan beforehand to get it done. So this is a beautiful spread for me. It works great for me and it's wonderful that if I'm done with it, I just fold it back in and I don't have to really take out any pages or refer to something else or flip flop it back and forth. It's just an easy pull out and stick it back in. So that's why I love this planner. It just works so well for me. If there's something that you found that was um, working for you, I would love to hear it as well because I believe we're always learning from one another and our planners will evolve as our lifestyles change. Um, I don't expect my planner to have the same formatting every single year. I don't put down any planner in particular because it works for other people even though it doesn't work for me and what works for me may not work for other people. So leave me comments, uh, thumbs up if you like this video and uh, if you want to know more about the planner that I did not cover or if you just have any questions, please leave comments. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.